If plants are sentient, then we vegans have a real problem on our hands. Or do we? It's certainly a hot topic recently, with celebrities from Neil deGrasse Tyson saying things like this. Have you stopped and thought about what a tree is? You will not kill an animal to eat it, but you will slaughter all manner of plant life and eat it. We basically eradicated smallpox, right? Well, what about the smallpox microbes, all right? How do they feel about this? To Joe Rogan saying this. Plants are a life form. And we have this thing in our head that because they don't move, oh, they must be stupid. Mm -hmm. But they're in some way communicating with each other in a method that we don't totally understand. Yeah. Which f vegans hard. Yeah, right, right. That whole self-righteousness and all the craziness that comes along with being a vegan and oh, cruelty-free. Yeah. Not to those screaming <laughs> plants that you can't hear. <laughs> Because they scream. Salad. To the dudes from the hit YouTube channel Charisma on Command saying this. The grass grows right on top of each other. Does every blade of grass mine? So does this argument hold water? Well, I actually take it slightly more seriously than most vegans, but I'm going to save that more controversial stance for later. Also, I'm going to do this video without referencing any studies, though there will be science. One, because there's already plenty of videos that do that, and two, because I want you to be able to respond to this argument in a more organic, non-technical manner, rather than arguing over sample sizes and conflicts of interest. Now, when presented with an argument, it's useful to just accept the premise as true and see if the argument still holds up. And you can do this using even if statements, which work like this. So in this case, the first thing I'd say is that even if it's true that plants are sentient, that doesn't actually mean they feel pain. In principle, it's possible to uncouple sentience from suffering. For instance, imagine being so high on drugs that you can't experience anything bad. No physical pain, no emotional pain, no ruminating over that time you said, you too. You too, you have a nice flight too. <laughs> Fly someday. You would have sentience, but no suffering. Likewise, it would be possible to have sentience with no suffering or well-being, a surreal experience I've actually had due to a rare prescription drug reaction. The next thing to note is that even if plants can feel pain, we're less certain of what causes them pain compared to animals. Stepping on them, drought, temperature changes, nutrient concentrations, radio waves, listening to baby shark on repeat. The farther an organism is from humans on the family tree, the more murky these assumptions become. For instance, we know chickens don't like to be crammed together for long periods of time, as evidenced by the fact they'll peck each other to death in crowded barns. But even if we knew plants were sentient, would we know that corn stalks don't like being crammed next to one another? Whatever evidence we could muster to support this claim would almost certainly entail more presumptions than analogous claims applied to chickens or pigs or cows. Why? Because those individuals are much more like us, the beings with the highest probability of sentience. And so, extrapolatory leaps from observed behavior Behavior would necessarily be smaller and involve less assumptions with animals compared to plants. The next thing to note is that even if plants can feel pain, and even if we know that harvesting them causes pain, it still doesn't imply that you should eat animal products. And that's because more plants are injured and killed to feed humans who aren't on a vegan diet. To understand why, let's look at the trophic pyramid. The trophic pyramid illustrates the way food energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next in the food web. So at the bottom, we have what are called producers, generally plants which get their energy from the sun. Above that, primary consumers are those organisms which eat producers. And above that, the secondary consumers that eat primary consumers, and so on. Plus, we've got decomposers that dip their toe in at every level. The critical thing to note here is the energy lost as we climb the pyramid. On average, 80 to 90% of the energy or calories are lost as heat on each ascending level. That's because not all the energy an animal consumes is used to build tissue that we can then eat. The animal has to use energy to move, think, digest, and execute many other metabolic activities. And we humans can't eat the movement and thoughts of animals. Those calories have been largely transmuted into unusable heat. And this is just a fundamental principle of thermodynamics. In fact, it's the second law of thermodynamics. According to Lumen Learning, none of the energy transfers and transformations in the universe is completely efficient. In every energy transfer, some amount of energy is lost in a form that is unusable. In most cases, this form is heat energy. And if you want to dig further into that topic, I've included some links about thermodynamics and entropy in the description. 
So if we eat plants, we'll suffer about a 90% calorie loss. But if we eat herbivores, we'll suffer a 99% calorie loss. In other words, way more plants die in the process of us eating herbivores who themselves ate plants, compared to if we just ate the plants directly. And that counts both fodder and forage. So grass-fed cows don't solve this problem. So one strength of citing the trophic pyramid and thermodynamics, rather than those studies we vegans have all come to know and love, is that you don't get bogged down in some overly technical argument about whether it was actually 80% of crops that are fed to animals, and what percentage they can digest, and what percentage of that humans could actually eat if they wanted to, and who funded the study, and on and on. And because it's a fundamental principle, it also acts as a solid defense against more novel arguments like eating insects, where you may not be as familiar with the latest research. Now you know that whether insects are eating plants or other insects or both, eating insects at a very basic level will produce an inefficiency in the system relative to just eating the plants. And just to be clear, the trophic pyramid wasn't something cooked up by a vegan think tank. You can find this in any introductory ecology textbook. And the same can be said of thermodynamics, which is part of virtually any introductory chemistry textbook. Now, the exact numbers in agriculture are admittedly more complicated because of the aforementioned differential in digestion between humans and ruminants. But the general principle of energy loss remains. Again, check out those links on thermodynamics and the trophic pyramid in the description. All right, so there's a couple more points to be made. Plus, I want to dive into my more controversial ideas about the nature of sentience, but I'm going to save that for part two since I try to keep each of my videos relatively short. If you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button and also leave me a like and comment to help keep me motivated and to appease our all-powerful algorithm overlord. And if you want to help me make higher quality videos more frequently, consider supporting me on Patreon, which I have linked in the description. Thanks for watching.